Um, you should use a condom before you listen. The American dream is dead. John Lyle, L.A. Lloyd, and Drew Bennett, Beaver Kool-Aid. It just jumps right out at you, doesn't it? Sometimes. You just don't know with Lloyd. You wait for Lloyd to get ready, and then the next thing you know, we're on. We're on, baby. <laughs> Let's do it. That's- because King Lloyd has other things to do. Let's make it happen now. It's a control issue, man. I can't help myself. Yeah, well, so the one thing you can control is beaver (laughs) Kool-Aid? Wow, that's saying a lot. (laughs) That's the only thing I can control in my life is beaver Kool-Aid. How sad is that? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I hope that and a vowel movement. So, you know, any of those things. No, let's not. I mean, we have it. 10 seconds in a vowel movement wow vowel i wasn't going there again there. not right off all right the very beginning but i will tell you it 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 popped in my mind when you said vowel movement but i'll leave it at that no no we can move on we can move on it's it's beaver kool-aid aka vowel movement you know that <laughs> Well, at least we already have a title for episode 17 here. I think that's what it is. So the Lloyd, vowel movement. Vowel what's, movement. Uh, what's going on in your life, man? My life? Yeah. I have an 18-year-old daughter. Just went to prom. Who, you or the uh, daughter? Uh, I, well, I wanted to, but uh, she was having none of me being a chaperone, I can tell you that. It's like, come on, creepy old man. Stay away yeah. from the prom. You know. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did you chaperone your daughter's prom? I don't think so. Oh, no. Oh, no, I wouldn't want to do that. I can't even remember my daughter's prom because she went to an all-girls uh, high school. Sure yeah. she did. So um, hot. I, but I don't remember. I know there had to have been some promy thing in there. I know there was, but that was a long time ago, damn it. Drew, did you say so hot when he said an all-girls? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you sick fucker. <laughs> See, that's all right, though, buddy. You just make jokes now. That karma's coming. Oh, yeah. no, it's going to be a long time for Drew. His yeah. kids are so young. That yeah. It's going to be a long time. I'm going to be old. I won't care. You're going to be looking through, like, cataracts going, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I can't see it anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> I've already okay. got it. I can't, I can't, for whatever reason, the, my, uh, and this started a couple of years ago, my left eye is so much weaker than my right. And it's and I I feel like it's gotten worse lately, uh, to where I I can't even I, I can't I can't I can't read from far away and now I can't read close up with my left eye. Well, that happens to all of us. You're gonna have to get glasses, well, reading I have glasses. glasses. And yeah. and the last time I went in, he was like, "Yeah, your left eye's weaker than your right, and you're gonna have to use this." And I was like, oh, "Okay." Yeah, it's called a monocle, <laughs> and you use yeah. the monocle <laughs> over your glasses. I would look good with one. So you you would you're, I would not many people could pull no. off Mr. Peanut, but you could do it. I could. I was thinking more Monopoly guy, you know. I was thinking more of the Monopoly guy. He's got already got, got the mustache. Monopoly guy is, is doesn't have doesn't have a monocle. He didn't have a monocle. I thought he had a monocle. No, oh, I thought he did too. No, I don't think. I know so. he's got that mustache, and I thought he had a monocle. No, no, no. I don't think the Monopoly guy has a monocle. Oh, okay. I'm I'm looking right now. Monopoly <laughs> guy. That's the reason why you can hear me, you know. Clicking. Um, no, only Mr. Peanut. I, I see one with the Monopoly guy with a monocle, but not many. All the ones I see are uh are Mr. Peanut. Yeah. Well, he definitely has a monocle. Drew could pull off a monocle, though. You know, with that he mustache? Could. He could. I mean, not many people could, but he could. Because Drew will kind of squint one eye, and then he'd raise that eyebrow up and have that monocle just sitting there, kind of like, uh, yeah. wow, you're kind of blowing my mind right now, man. Yeah. You're right. You could be a modern-day Burgess Meredith playing the Penguin. Maybe he- I should be the one who brings the monocle back. You should. <laughs> But you, only- you are right. I mean, at, at some points in time uh, over the, the, the years, because Monopoly has been around for a long, long time, the uh, Monopoly guy did have a monocle. But most of the pictures I see are without Sans monocle. Sans monocle. No monocle. Well, you only need it for one eye, Drew, so bring it back, man. I mean, everybody- no, he's, he, no, he has to wear glasses anyhow, so he's got to double up on one side and have a monocle. <laughs> I should have two monocles. You know, 
<laughs> yeah, you, you know, of, of uh, varying strengths, and maybe that could work it out. And so that's when you when you show that you're really appalled. First thing you do is take one monocle off. Yeah, and then you the other one shows total disgust. Yeah, when you take the other monocle out. Then he whips out that glass eye, and then everyone gets pissed yeah. off. Uncle Drew, I will never disappoint you again. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to have one. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with this left eye. It's going bad. Well, you can do what, what I do with my left hand, which is wow. not much of anything Yeah. other than the other woman. Um, Maybe I'll get an eye patch. I just have a, a left hand so that people don't say, what? What happened to your left hand? What do you think would cause more attention, an eye patch or a monocle? I'm thinking an eye patch because you could you could start pirate talking. Go down to the airport, you'll see an eye patch somewhere. Yeah. If you've got a monocle and you see that your social nephew or niece has done something just awful okay. and very against your social standing, that's where you're appalled and you open up your eyes and the monocle falls out help me out here what what is attached to the monocle is it a chain or a string that goes to your pocket i can't remember how that uh, actually works or is it just just a piece of glass it's plugged into your walkman <laughs> i think they have i think it's like a necklace isn't it or something i don't it's know just, it, it, oh, i'll tell it's you just... what maybe maybe i'll tell you what it, where, i think it i think it plugs into uh the the lapel right mm. no that that's what i was thinking yeah, no, but the monocle itself is just held in. You know, you hold it in with your eye. eye. But he's, well, we're talking about the string that it's on. Yeah, doesn't it fall out? Doesn't it have something attached to it? Well, yeah, so it doesn't fall to the ground. But right. you're still, you're gonna, you're gonna have to really collapse that thing with your. No, I, I get that. But when you get when when you're in full disdain and you open your eyes wide and it drops. Yeah, it doesn't go to the ground. It just yeah. So where is it attached to on your body? You'd say okay. So it's got a string attached to the monocle. To your vest. Where is it attached to on your body? You have to wear a little vest. Well, won't your uh, optometrist really go through this whole monocle thing with you? <laughs> maybe it maybe it attaches to your nipple ring. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think uh, some monocles had some some attachments and some didn't. You just so, had to be so, quick with the hands to grab thing. it. Yeah, it's it's around the neck so that if you get rid of it i'll tell you how you can get people to wear a monocle if you put a computer in it yeah right and and then when you put the monocle on you know you can close one eye and see a screen i bet you get a lot of people wearing a stupid monocle that just that just made me think whatever happened to google glass yeah that's what i was just thinking right then it's still around google has just been unable to yeah have any kind of hardware that anyone's latched onto, which is just amazing. But well, VR is what it's all about. Do it. VR is what it's all about, right? And that's what everybody's spending their money on. You go over to the NAB and it's all VR and all drones. virtual reality. I have no idea. I have never. Seen I thought I thought they were going VR. more like in the augmented reality, so you could actually, you know. It's the same thing. I mean, it doesn't matter if you can see, you know, your surroundings or not. It's all virtual reality and, you know, augmented reality. It's all the same vein. Because I think it's really great that you can take a photo of your house and then all of a sudden you could, you know, start dropping in furniture or paintings or whatever. Yeah. And you can actually yeah. design your room and see what it would actually look like before you. And we were laughing about it at the NAB because I was there a couple of weeks ago. That would be the National Association of Broadcasters Convention. That's right. Yeah, so we're in Las Vegas, and you, we're on the floor, and we're across from one of the VR places, one of the booths, and they got they they got this game where you go in, and you put on the goggles, and then you're a, you're like Godzilla, and you can go and fight the airplanes that are attacking you, and you can destroy buildings, rampage that kind of thing, and you know, it's like it's like riding a scooter. They're fun to do, but you don't want to ever be seen on one. <laughs> And, and, uh, everyone looks like an idiot Yeah, in those goggles standing around and it's all these guys in star Wars t-shirts doing that all day for the four days that we were there. So is it a full on helmet or just like uh, goggles that you strap on? No, your... they're, yeah, they're like, they're like big goggles, yeah. you know, that you put on. But is it pretty cool? I mean, is it fun when you're in them? I didn't do it cause I didn't want to look like an idiot. Oh, oh. Come on. You don't need those that look like an idiot, Drew. Come on. Yeah, no kidding. Come on, man. 
Don't no, worry. They, 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 had a, they had a TV screen that showed everything that the guy was doing, so we didn't need to do it. We you know, when you're in the mid-40s, that's the way it is. Well, you wait another 10, 15 years, you won't care. Yeah. I like all that with, stuff. No, I would go. Wet socks up to your knees. I think in Seattle they have a thing where you go in with those goggles on and they've got, you know, a, a gym or whatever, an open space that can be one of six or seven different environments and you can go in and play laser tag. Now, that sounds fun to me. I would go do that. Yeah. I just don't care about, you know, put, I don't care about putting on goggles and looking around and stuff. Who gives a shit? But wouldn't it be cool if you were disabled, like if you were in a, say, a wheelchair and you could never walk and you could put these virtual on and all of a sudden you get this sure. feeling that you're walking again sure. and running? I think yeah. that would be very cool for a disabled person. No, I get it. Sure would. That'd be great. I mean, what a great yeah. mental feeling. I'm not saying no one should use it and that it's a terrible. I just am saying that what they have now is... You know, right. we're in the Atari 2600, you know, days of virtual reality. Anyway, It's infancy. So yeah. so what you're saying is usually on Beaver Kool-Aid, uh, Drew will usually throw out a concept or a person that he can't stand. Mm -hmm. um, so you're not doing this to virtual reality. No, I think it's you're I think it's cool. It's, it's a very beginning. Very, just, yeah, very beginning. Like, you know, yeah, exactly. Like quadraphonic sound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Good. Yeah, the very, the very beginning. Well, I tell you something else. This is the very beginning. I don't know if you guys saw this or not. The uh, first uh, penis and scrotum transplant in the world. I'd miss that one. That happened at John Hopkins uh, back in March. Was it to a woman or an actual man? It was to a guy that was uh, a, a vet who was injured in Afghanistan. Wow. And they took the penis and scrotum along with a partial abdominal wall from a deceased donor. And uh, with the aid of nine surgeons, it was 14 hours in surgery. They made it happen. The guy was released from the hospital this week. Now, I hate to, um, to bring stereotypes in here, but I'm going to. Okay, go ahead, Lloyd. That's uh, usually what you do. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you do it or not. It was did they did they say what ethnicity the deceased man was and <laughs> who the no the no, the guy who got it was? Know. So Wouldn't that be the shittiest thing in the world for them to give you a micro penis. Or well, something that's like what that. I was thinking. I was like, if you're you know like me and you get the BBDM, you're going like, yes, uh, surgery completed, now things are great. Yeah, the jokes so we were flying around. Ebony and ivory or... You know, the jokes were flying around about that. Yeah. About, but, yeah, you know, fine. then there's this... The ink is black, the page is white. We yeah, don't know. but then there's the, the other side of the coin where, you know, I guess it's better than not having anything, but you, before the accident, were well endowed, and all of a it's sudden... probably average size. You got uh, this... You know, I think just the fact that you got a penis and scrotum back is back probably is, a big deal. So does that does that include the <laughs> testicles? He said the scrot. Yeah, but yeah, the scrot I mean, is whole, like the, it's the it's the whole pack. They're not going to just, just drop you a sack a in there. Of ping pong balls in there, no, and then he's man. got an actual dick or oh, whatever. Like noodles? No, no, I I don't know. I don't know if they're. And, the, and here's my testicles. other question: Do the do the does do his balls work? Yeah, the, can he produce sperm? I don't know that. I don't know these things. John, you bring us these stories. He's producing sperm. Is he producing the other dude's sperm, or is it like a mix of his sperm? Some dead guy and <laughs> put it on somebody else. That's pretty like some amazing. Some sperm soup. Like it's like three, like the first human being born with three different pieces of DNA. I mean, do you do you heal up and then you say all that crap and they still they left me with foreskin? No, I think that the, the first penis and scrotum transplant in the world. That's amazing. Let me tell you something. If it was me, I'd be sending dick pics to everybody I know. <laughs> <laughs> you if just anyone have to watch, because if you just drop trowel in the grocery store Look, line, then somebody behind you goes, "That's Harold's." If, <laughs> if <laughs> that was Harold's. <laughs> if anyone's allowed to send dick pics, it's that guy. I mean, come on, anybody. Like, what if his wife? What if what if the wife of the guy that's deceased like really loved his you know? So package? can he you know does can he get a natural erection or does he have to use Viagra? I don't know. Lloyd, the story was is that 
this actually happen. All right. Okay. We're not out in the field now. We're not digging you know, down. Six months, eight months later, it was a package deal. Literally. We have a guy in Austin who uh, got 15 minutes of fame Wednesday night at a Foo Fighters concert, and uh, they're labeling him the Kiss Guy. Now, Drew, I'm sure, is very excited because you probably even posted the video, Drew. Let me guess. Have you have you shared this video? Yeah, I was like the, the first guy to do it. Right. So... I don't know if John, have you heard of this story, John, with the guy who got up oh. and okay. So let me bring you up to speed. There's this guy who goes by Yayo, and he got on stage with Dave Grohl and played guitar, did monkey wrench, and fucking killed it. I mean, nailed it. Just, you know, it's like it was so good, everyone was going like, this has to be a setup, which it wasn't. Now, we have kind of embraced Yayo at KOBJ, at least Beto has, our midday guy. And uh, we're going to continue this 15 minutes of fame and milk it for every fucking thing it's worth because we're starting to get some viral video shit going on. But essentially, this kid had seen how some other folks had got on stage in other cities with Dave Grohl and knew the song was Monkey Wrench. So he made a sign that said, Dave, pull me up on stage. Let me do Monkey Wrench. You know, he's right there. He keeps flashing it in front of Dave's face all night long. Finally, Dave takes him up on it, pulls him up on stage. This kid practiced monkey wrench the night before, the day of, the morning of, just thinking, man, this would be really cool if it happens. And it fucking happened. He goes, these thousands of people, he's up on stage doing monkey wrench and kills it. So anyway, it was uh, something that I had to share. No, no, no. The question is, is that how are you guys, the radio station, how are you guys furthering this this guy's fame because we or my midday guy posted the video on his blog and all of a sudden the kid reached out to our midday guys like hey man that was me and of course we got him up to the station and had him on the air and told his story about how he actually got up on stage and it wasn't a setup so we we kind of got behind the scenes of yayo the kiss guy and how he got to play Monkey Wrench with Dave Grohl. Why is he the Kiss guy? Because he had Kiss makeup on his face. He's got long black hair and, and oh Kiss makeup. So that's why I brought it into the hey, story. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Because it's of Drew. Gene Simmons makeup. Was it Gene? Not Kiss makeup. All right. What the fuck is this? Kiss makeup. <laughs> oh, let's, let's get it right. Let's make sure which cartoon we got. Yes. Right? Well, there's four um, of them. Five different, six different ones. He was dressed yeah, as... Now we got to go fund me. Because we want to give him a new penis and scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Help KLBJ with Yayo. He dressed the part. He was in a motorhead t-shirt. So he was uh in in he was makeup was like Gene Simmons, mm -hmm. but he was wearing a motorhead t-shirt. Right. Yeah. And, and he had a he, sign. Because because those are, you know. Uh, Dave wears Gene Simmons t shirts all the you know a lot. You see a lot of pictures of him in Gene Simmons t shirts. Yeah. And then he's a big motorhead fan. So the guy was he was playing to He was Dave. sucking up. Everyone that was there, everyone said, Oh, that had to be a setup. It was just too perfect because, you know, he even brought his own pick. So he was Well, he's he a was, train he's a he the guy's a trained musician. I mean he's not you know, he's not a scrub or anything. I mean, oh yeah. He was good, great. Very good guitarist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's going to be a really good program director. Right. LBJ. You'll just see pretty soon. <laughs> the next night guy. You know, we need this guy because everyone knows him. He's, he's so popular. Sorry, Lloyd. That's all right. Why don't you put him on from midnight to six? I'm, it could be Yayo in the Oval. No, because midnight to six leads to that afternoon thing. That's true. Yayo will be right in this, you know. Grooming the next radio talent because, you know, he's not going to make any money playing with uh, Dave Grohl on stage, so. He had more fame in that three minutes than he'll get in a 40-year career in radio. I can promise you that. Ya Yayo's Yo-Yo Countdown, 40 songs out of order. <laughs> We're coming up with benchmarks for this dude already. I just heard he's a co-host with Bobby Bones, and uh, <sighs> he's got a development deal mm. with ABC. Right. Bones and Bones and Yayo. Yeah. Yayo. Yayo yeah. and Bobby Bones. See, you, that was a total Bones and Yayo transplant. <laughs> Yayo and the Bones. For the first time. I don't know how the kids deal with it. I mean, everything's documented. And I was thinking the other day of, you know, I was, I don't know, hanging out with Ben and just thinking, man, this kid, he's, he's going to be able to access so much. The, the, the world is going to advance 
so much between now and when he is my age. Right. Uh, and, and every, and everything he's going to have, you know, so many advantages. But then I reminded myself that I was born in the seventies, you know, raised in the eighties, a young kid in the nineties, 18 and 1990. And, uh, uh, and and a large amount of my life is undocumented, and well, I, yeah, I I'm, mean, happy, I'm happy. I'm happy about that. I'm kind of okay I, with that. I don't want to, you know. I mean, you know, the the girls, Lloyd, they, they got a lot of pictures, man. A lot of stuff online. They've grown up in the YouTube generation. Yeah, I just am glad that's not me. Yeah. Well, there's this guy from my college who all of a sudden found all these negatives of me in like 1982. I've seen them. Oh God, I've seen those. My my daughter's like that. Seriously, you had like a porn stash and your mullet. You're wearing like a you're wearing like a yellow tank top. You got some Converse on. I've seen those. Pictures. I couldn't even grow like a real mustache. It's just a little bit under my nose. I'm like, he looks like John Oates. It yeah, <laughs> it's worse than John Oates. It's so funny because some of the girls I had the hots for in college, you know, now that are you know middle aged married women, they're like. You look so much better now than you did in college. I mean, I'm like, well, I don't know how to take that because at well, least I had a lot of hair. You know how you take it. You just look like shit, Lloyd. <laughs> and I look a you little know, bit better than you look shit. Like that Simon guy that Negan <laughs> killed on uh, Walking Dead. I'd be like, isn't it weird how that worked in the opposite for you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess that's a good thing, right? No, but see, that's what I. But what, what what Drew's getting at is that. And and what you're talking about, Lloyd, is the fact that something gets unearthed that those these were negatives. Yeah. Um, you know, that kind of thing is so rare, whereas now everything is documented, it's digitized, it lasts forever. Yeah. And uh, you know, there's no anonymity. You, it's hard to escape, it's hard to be private if you wanted to be. Um, and most people, I think that there's a longing to have privacy, but people can't identify that longing. Just to give you an example, I was at the, uh, the Shinedown show I was talking about at the Tobin Center and all of a sudden I'm starting getting these dings on my phone. Right. And our good friend, Josh Enriquez is up, you know, like three floors up. He's snapping photos of me looking at my phone in the middle of a song going like, yeah, there's Mr. L.A. Lloyd enjoying a concert looking at his phone. So same thing. Wow. I, yeah. I mean, how fucked up is that? I'm like, dude, I thought we were friends and you're posting shit on Facebook at me staring at my phone in the middle of a song. It's like there is no you can't be anonymous anymore for anywhere. I'm telling you, Lloyd, you can if you're me. <laughs> My What's your secret, being, man? What's you're your secret? Enough, you're disconnected enough. You're by yourself. You're you, you can be you can be somewhat off the grid. Yeah. Like look at Taylor. How long has she been online? Five years. Online? Oh, she's yeah. been online for yeah. I'd say five, maybe. Yeah, I think I, she let her have Taylor a Facebook page. I think Facebook at twelve or thirteen. Turn eighteen yeah. on the eighteenth. Thank April. you, John. I appreciate you. Helping us out with the yeah. So uh, the so magic Taylor's radio. eighteen and she's been online. She's had a Facebook page since she was five two, years. She was thirteen. So thirteen. Yeah. And my my thing is that you know we didn't have we didn't the three of us didn't have that kind of thing. Yeah, and that you was know, a we, good thing. When we went to high school, which is the hardest part of you know for many kids of your young life uh, to have all of that online. Fuck that. I mean, I you think you didn't have any of that. What you had was an address. And so it was, uh, you know, where you lived, who you hung out with. Slam books. But it was basically, you know, e your reputation that was either mm -hmm. predicated upon what you've actually done or rumor. The only thing I have to document it is a prom photo, my senior photo, because um, I really didn't have anything in our yearbook, so... Uh, might have had something with the baseball team, but other than that, there might have been four or five photos from high school. Think how many photos. What kind of pictures did you have with the baseball team? No, that was me. Uh, uh, you were on the baseball team. I was on okay, the baseball team. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of took it the other way as well. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> that's because I was. But there's no, there's, you know, there's just no, there aren't a ton of. Uh, pictures of you over the weekend and no uh, pictures of you when you were 14 looking a little you know rough going through puberty that kind of shit i think there was one with me with a sleeveless uh, union jack t-shirt uh, because i was you know trying to be cool uh 
Maybe that's the one that I've seen. And I saw, no, you've I saw never one seen where one. you had a bandana around around one of your legs. Yeah, that was it. That, was. <laughs> that wasn't a tourniquet. That was actually an accessory. <laughs> All right, you go. Lover boy. It was uh, Nike shoes, Levi's, and uh, about four or five bandanas from my knee down to my shoes. I don't know. You've got to understand, Lloyd was only introduced to modern civilization <laughs> in around 15 or 16. Yeah, so. right. I kind of know, not exactly, but I know the general area he, where Lloyd grew up. Yeah, in. John can pretty much put the pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah, he yeah. he knows and what's I can going see on. See how that that happens. He knows how it went down. That's where maybe a, a missionary stumbles into your little community, <laughs> and and all of a sudden brings maybe the outside world, mm-hmm. if you will. Lloyd and, Lloyd looked like the drummer culture. for Chicago. <laughs> Well, thank you. I was hoping it would be at least Journey, but you gave me Chicago. <laughs> Chicago. And I was hoping to be at least Troy the original from Journey. drummer, man. I'm giving maybe, you even more respect. Maybe, maybe from Tesla at least, but yeah, it was it was not a good look. Yeah, with your leg tourniquets. Yeah, I had my leg tourniquets I, on. I don't know where the hell I got. <laughs> and at some point, you probably had to look and go, yep, that's it. I'm looking right. And then you left. <laughs> it's like. Well, obviously, I was not in a gang because I had blue, red, purple, white, green. I had I, all the I, colors you know, of the we're rainbow. Not that much different in age, and and I I never ever ever wore bandanas on your on your leg. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, Lloyd Lloyd wore him around his leg and his neck at the same time. Yeah, I yeah. did. I actually did. I might have to put that photo for the uh, Beaver Kool Aid podcast. Uh, that was back in the day where you would wear a bandana and then you go to the skating rink, right? And you would, and you, if you had any money, you would spend it on neon laces for your shoes. Yeah, dude, that would be you, not us. Yeah. So, no, <laughs> I, mean, I can't. I have trouble relating to any of these things. But at least go I look was... at old pictures of Danny Serafini, who's the original drummer of Chicago. And, and look at old pictures of that dude. He looks like Lloyd. I'm trying to remember if I even had some parachute pants. I think I was going more for the David Cassidy look. You know, that's, that's... yeah. I think that you, whatever you were doing, you're <laughs> yeah, you were to going for David Cassidy, but you ended up da- Danny Seraphine. <laughs> <laughs> it was more like Danny Bonaducci. <laughs> You know, it's kind of funny you brought up the thing about the photos that you used to take on when you really had a nice 35 millimeter camera. Yeah. The light, the little black rolls of the, the film you had to take and get developed. Did you guys ever do anything? Uh, it was kind of porno, but it really was safe enough that you kind of you went just close enough that. Yeah, I had those. You wouldn't get Because I get them developed at the drugstore. Right, grocery right. Store, and sometimes they, they develop them no problem. Other times I got little stickers. Yeah. Oh really? Photos. Like a like a like a warning sticker? Don't do that anymore, or what? No, it's like a sticker over the genitalia. Oh no, oh no, oh! They censored oh. them for you. What a bunch yeah. of wow. jackasses! On there. <laughs> That's well, I, I, the reason I ask is because I had a I had a girlfriend that got creative one time with a little thirty five millimeter uh, uh, canister. Was she taking pictures? Or was she well, putting it somewhere? Yeah, yeah. She was no, put- we're talking canister now. We're talking film canister. Wait a second. You know the thirty-five millimeter little black thing. It's about the size of a yeah. It's a spool. plastic the gray top. top the, the gray roll can. got the gray top. You yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Yep. So yep. she decided she wanted to uh, get creative to see if we could get it through without getting censored. So she puts the little black canister on you know the top of my uh, my penis, right, and make it look like a top hat. And she <laughs> she paints a little, you know, face on it too, a little beard. And, you know, just gets enough where you really don't know what it is or you kind of do if you really pay attention to it. But uh, <laughs> it, it went through and we had the biggest laugh ever. It's like, wow, it made it through. Look at that. There's that little happy dude. It looked like the Monopoly guy. Should have made it through, meaning they actually developed Developed him. Yes, yes, that's right. They developed it, and it looked like the Monopoly guy. We should have put a little monocle there, but uh, that's his. <laughs> that's a picture of your John Hancock. Which would have been fun. You had one eye. Um, huh. Yeah, so, right. I'm sorry, man. I'm trying right now, but this thing won't even begin to fit on top of mine. <laughs> That's what I told you. <laughs> Let me get the screen bean can, see if that works. Better. He's right. trying to get it to work, but it looks like a fedora. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
It's like a beanie. <laughs> you, <laughs> you look like a Shriner. <laughs> I look like Abe Lincoln. What the hell is going on? Like a Shriner. I should have put a little tassel on it, man. That would have been great. Yeah, that looks right. Fez, baby. <laughs> right. There See, don't is. you look back on chicks like that and and how how much fun that was? That was a good time. If you have some uh, some some woman that thinks it's funny to do this with your penis, yeah, you know, you don't find many like that now. No, no. when you get older, no, no, you know, just discovering it and thinking it's fun and fun with genitalia. Hey, you know, did you, you did you reciprocate? Uh, something with her? No, no, no. It was only me. I, I was not creative like she was. She's like, hey, pull your pants down. I want to, I want to try something. I'm like, okay, this sounds fun. Oh, okay. But literally, I didn't know she was going to dress up my penis with the top hat and put a mustache and, you know, face on it. So so you didn't put eyes on her inner thigh? No, or those no, or, I know, should so have. There it is. And, you know, look at you. You got carp lips. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> She didn't have like a, a landing strip down there. No, you no, no. You couldn't put your, no, you couldn't no, put your nose down there and take no. a picture of your forehead and that call was yourself. That range chicken. Yeah, yes. That that's, was, uh, yeah. There was no landing strip. That was all yeah, full was on. None of that. It was just whatever it was going to be, right? Yeah, right. No, I mean, that was the way it was. I mean, it was the grand unveiling. And so, you know, it was, it was going to be what it was going to be. I mean, this took a whole Another week, era. you know. This was like, this. Was, we didn't pay the, we were poor. We didn't go for the, you know, overnight uh, developing. We were like, okay, this was a project. Took the photos, took the film in, waited for about, you know, four or five days Drove back over seven miles away from to, to the drugstore, picked it up, didn't even look at it in the car. It's like, no, 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 let's wait till we get home. Literally get back home, and all of a sudden we do the unveiling, and there it is. She was so happy of herself that she had, had pulled that off. It's so. like getting through the airport with some weed. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, because they, they actually developed it because they didn't really see what the hell it was they or if they did they of course made extra copies yeah. and everyone saw it you know you talk about the unveiling there's gonna be one of these days i'm running for office i'm almost there i'm like okay i've told everything all my bad skeletons in the closet right about to get that big nomination for senator and all of a sudden my uh, my opponent whips out the fucking dick pic with the top hat and there it is my political career is over well like yeah. i said then you go you know i'm a Log cabin Republican. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> My husband took that. Away. <laughs> it's, uh, I just think it, I mean, I, I'm still stuck back thinking about how much fun it was to be with women that wanted to do stuff like that. Yeah. It was a good time. Yeah. The, they like the girls nice that to wanted to, fun. they wanted to cast your junk in plaster. Yeah. 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 Well, college was fun like that. We we played a lot. We had a good time in college. But I mean, that sounds that sounds normal. I mean, Lloyd he's he's lived a sheltered life on a tobacco farm. Right. And he, he's up in into college, and uh, you know he's 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 uh, starting to date around, and the girls are you know up for it. Yeah. I wish you could have just seen though when you when you're describing this because. Like I said, I kind of know where Lloyd grew up, but I definitely know where he went to college. And it's debatable which was more isolated. I think the college was more isolated. Yeah, it could be. You know, but that the fact that he just that this is it. I'm in love. Yeah. I'm done. I'm I'm there. If I met somebody that fun right now, I might fall in love. Yeah, exactly. It could happen. If they're like that. I doubt it. Well, I hope it I does. Because there's no, uh, there are no 35 millimeter film <laughs> canisters around anymore. <laughs> That's what you need to tell her. You know, like, hey, man, I'm old school. I've got an old Nikon here. And, right uh, here. Why don't you put this uh, little uh, <laughs> mini SD card on there? <laughs> now it uh, looks like I'm graduated in high school. <laughs> what I got? I mean, I don't know what I'm looking at. Mini around. SD. You could put it down on your balls and make it look like Moses with the Ten Commandments if you had two of them, maybe. I mean, I don't, other than that, I don't know what you can do with it, you know? Oh, see, at least you're thinking. Though. Yeah. That's I'm, creative. I'm trying to be creative with it. That's the kind of stuff that keeps you on the radio. Right. <laughs> of course, you got to watch that. Don't do any more of that. We'll have to kick you off a of beaver Kool Aid. <laughs> We can't have that kind of nonsense on the beaver. I will go to your party and I will tear it up. Really? Beaver Kool-Aid. Get it hard. With Lyle, L.A. Lloyd, and Drew. Make it look a man. So go ahead, stick your head up your ass. <laughs> 